Before we start the video, make sure to subscribe to my channel. I appreciate all the support I received from you. And as always, all the information in my videos is rumors taken from the internet or the street. I'm not saying the information is fact. Yeah, that's good, because people used to come through Shenandoah every day. Yeah, this block, uh, words can't even explain, man. Can't even explain. Hey, man, let's go about the old five on money. Young money, man, they in the building. 600 boy LA man, LA Capone man, get to him man. Don't see two boys man. Team Locked on number nine man, number nine to shoot him, you hear me? Boy, you a bitch, boy. Hey, we get a little bitch. Yeah. yeah. Fuck is wrong with you, hey. boy? Hey, hey, I am free. Bitch, boy, what the fuck are you talking about, boy? You have to be willing to die or go to jail for a hundred years if that's the lane that you're stepping in. You have to understand that whether you're 15, 16, you got to think like a man. You Oh, you're not? Uh, Why does everybody say you're only 16 years old? They say what they want to say. How old so are you? how old are you? 300. <laughs> the story of No Limit Mad Max, Part 3. In Part 2 we ended with the murder of KTS Vaughn, and now we start with the aftermath. As you all know, Vaughn was hated by many, including Circon City, No Limit, ABK, 600, O'Block. 051 Young Money, Gotti World, Lamron, THF46 and GBE. But as you probably also understand, he was loved by many. For his crowd, he was a D-Roy, a Melly, or a Lil B. This meant that not only KTS members were looking for revenge, but also members from Black Mob and not least Lakeside was looking for members from mainly No Limit to take revenge. However, the first gang to take revenge was not KTS or any of the others I just mentioned, nor was it a revenge for KTS Vaughn, but it was revenge for the murder of Lil Joe and Lil C from MTG where No Limit Mad Max was rumored to be the killer. On July 11th, MTG took revenge on No Limit by murdering one of their most beloved and famous members, No Limit Capo. The murder of No Limit Capo was a direct response after the murders of Lil C and Lil Joe. Capo, only 22 years old, was a rising rapper in Chicago. He was loved by multiple gangs, as you all know he claimed both GBE and NLMB. He was very close to people like Chief Keef and the rest of GBE, and G Herbo and the whole of No Limit. G Herbo was even out walking with Capo earlier the day he was killed. On July 11, 2015, Capo was standing outside in the 7700 block of South Kingston Avenue at about 1.40 p.m. According to G. Herbo, he was standing outside Lil Squack's apartment when a red Toyota Avalon pulled up and started shooting at Capo, striking him in his back and hip. Capo collapsed right on the sidewalk. A large pool of blood spread around him as people around tried to help him and make him stay alive. There is a video of this, but it is nothing I will show here and do not recommend that anyone else watch it either. It is heartbreaking to watch. What is even more heartbreaking is that minutes after the murder, D he suspected red Toyota was pulled over by police on Richard's drive. The driver, Antoine Watkins, made a decision. Instead of waiting and seeing what the police wanted, he drove away in a panic. When he did that, he hit little, innocent, defenseless Dylan a 13-month-old child who was laying in his baby stroller. Antoine was driving 60 miles an hour. The little baby tragically passed away at the hospital, truly heartbreaking.
Antoine was charged with the murder of the 13-month-old baby and got sentenced to eight years in prison. However, he was recently released on parole after five years in jail. According to news sites, Antoine was in the car with two other passengers. None of the others in the car were charged, and the reason they could not link them to the murder of Capo, is because they did not find any weapons. It's really mind-blowing how easy it is to get away with murder, and what's even more sickening, is that Antoine got away with five years in prison after killing a 16-month-old baby. According to rumors, one of the killers who killed Capo was Quag from MTG. Many have also speculated about the reason why Capo was killed. Some have said he was killed because he mocked a dead member from MTG called Bio, who was killed by an LMB in late 2014. However, no mockery has ever been found from Capo towards Bio on social media. Therefore most have been pretty sure that the murder of Lil C and Lil Joe was the main reason. G Leak from MTG even said in his song BZ, Bio, Joe and Lil C, creeping some decent, because where I'm from, every season is killing season. MTG is not no limit main enemies, so there have not been that many casualties between them both. What is sad but also strange is that the same day that Capo was murdered, he paid respect to Drama from Jeffrey. Drama was a member who was close to both MTG and No Limit. Both have claimed Drama World. Both Quag and Capo have pictures with Drama. One year after MTG killed Capo, they also killed Solo from NLMB. No Limit is still out for revenge after on MTG. On September 10, 2015, just three months after losing Capo, No Limit lost another member, this time it was Black Mob who would drop a body on No Limit. It's rumored that Shawty hit from Black Mob, Black Mob's top killer, at least of those still alive, caught one eye Mike from No Limit, ran up to him and shot him to death. This was Shawty hit's fourth or fifth body in a very short period of time, this after killing Molly from No Limit just a few months earlier. Shawty Hit, together with Shooter Shells, was really causing a lot of trouble and sorrow for No Limit, and it would continue. No Limit had just gotten KTS Von out of the way, now they had Shawty Hit and Shooter Shells left. Spook and Denny G from Pocket Town should also be included here as well. These people were the main ones in the front line in the war against No Limit. No Limit were really desperate to kill all four of them. Today, in October 2021, two names have been deleted from that list, nearly three. The years 2015 to 2016 was the years when No Limit Herbo and Lil Baby really started to pop, moving out of Chicago and bringing some of the main killers with them. Don't get me wrong, a lot of the main killers were still left, and were still passing out smoke, but it was also a new generation that started going crazy, especially a small clique containing Kilo, Chop, J-Dog, Dolph, Scooda and a couple of others. They really held it down for no limit during these years. But now, 
Most of them are either dead or locked up. Kilo is locked up for a body on MTG. J Dog is locked up for conspiracy to commit murder of a guy named Alexander, and Chop is also locked up for a body. Both Dolph and Scoot are dead. Dolph was killed March 1st, 2018, allegedly by Boom Ain from Lakeside. Scooter, who is rumored to have a body on Lakeside, got shot and killed in 2019 by J Money from Death Row, who is the brother of Hal Rail from Lakeside. Two other young teenage boys were also wounded in the shooting, and J Money actually got arrested and charged for this. But according to rumors, there were two shooters, the other one remains unknown. One who was not very active in 2016 was Mad Max, however, he was arrested several times, including for a gun. However, it would change in 2017. 2017 was a very hectic year for both No Limit and Black Mob, but mostly for Mad Max who allegedly dropped two more bodies, one of them, No Limit's main targets. One thing you all need to understand is that the reason Mad Max is not known around the country as this savage grave digger like Melly, KTS Vaughn and King Vaughn, is because he did not woof and diss on the internet. He was not a keyboard warrior, he was really out there in the streets dropping body after body and never got caught. He probably put in more work than both King Vaughn and Melly. Max was feared not only by No Limit's main enemies, he was also well respected and feared by both the block, 600 and Lamron. Back when Capo beefed with Lamron and THF 46, Max allegedly came with G Mineski and wet him up and shot up both Lamron, THF 46, and beat up and robbed Rex from Lamron. He also went back and forth with 600 Breezy and Louis from a block for sneak dissing, and both of them backed off, they knew what he was about. Here we see clearly how social media can change one's image of a person. No Limit as a whole isn't a set that self-snitched a lot. Sure there are those who mock dead people left and right, but never tell on themselves like many other gang members around Chicago, especially on the north and south side. It may have to do with how No Limit is structured, with older members teaching them younger how to move. No Limit move militant in comparison to other sets. Max got melanin. Fuck what you talking about? Stupid ass little boy. Ain't saying you don't know police yet. Me telling him talking like that, bro. But just as I mentioned earlier, the year 2017 would be a hot year for both sides. Already in the end of March 2017, it would slam again between Black Mob and No Limit. Again, No Limit would lose a member, and for anyone who has seen the story of Shooter Shells, knows that it was allegedly he along with Trap Mo, SGH and Shaky who was behind the murder. On March 29, 2017, Big Wet, whose real name was Jerry Jacobs, was walking on the sidewalk at 11.13 p.m. in the 7900 block of South Phillips. Suddenly a dark vehicle drove up and braked. 
Four men jump out of the car and shot Jerry in the right side of the stomach. Jerry managed to escape the other shots that came from the four men, and managed to take himself to South Shore Hospital. He was later transferred to Stroger Hospital, where he was pronounced dead at 3.40 a.m., March 30th. The four men who jumped out of the car were rumored to be shooter shells, Trap Mo, SGH and Shaky from Black Mob. Big Wet, 37, was a documented gang member of No Limit. According to police, Big Wet has twice been arrested on murder charges back in the days. It was not immediately clear whether those arrests led to convictions. This goes hand in hand with what I've heard about Big Wet being a killer and a shooter, just like his son. No Limit wet him up. Big Wet also had nearly four dozen arrests during his lifetime according to the police. This murder has become a well-known murder, because not even 24 hours after the murder, Big Wet's son, Wet Him Up, or Lil Wet, would avenge the death of his father, allegedly with the help of Mad Max, where Wet Him Up allegedly ran into a restaurant and started shooting. Like I said, less than 24 hours after Big Wet was shot to death, his son allegedly took revenge, albeit against completely wrong people who had nothing to do with his father's murder at least as far as we outsiders know. According to police, Wet M Up went to the Nadia Fish and Chicken restaurant at the corner of East 75th Street and South Coles Avenue, which is within a mile of where his father's blood was spilled. In the restaurant sat four young men, Dylan Jackson, 20, his brother, Raheem Jackson, 19, Emmanuel Stokes, 28 and Uden Davis, 32. According to police, there was clear evidence that Wet M Up entered the restaurant and shot Edwin and Emmanuel multiple times in the restaurant. The brothers Dylan and Raheem managed to escape from the restaurant as gunfire erupted, but both were fatally shot in different parking lots within a block of the restaurant authorities said. According to rumors, No Limit Met Max killed one of the brothers who ran from the restaurant when he helped Wet M Up in connection with the murders because there is nowhere in hell Wet M Up could have pulled that off by himself. I personally believe that Wet M Up went alone to the restaurant and started shooting, which the witnesses also confirmed. However, I think Wet M Up had an assistant who was waiting in a car outside, that assistant is rumored to have been Mad Max, and if the theory is correct, Max had now caught his tenth body, which means that was now up on double digits. Maybe it's just me. But to me it sounds unreasonable that Wet M Up, alone, could have managed to shoot the two men who managed to escape from the restaurant in two different directions a block between each other. Tragically, all four were pronounced dead shortly after the shooting. No Limit Wet M Up, whose real name is Maurice Harris, was arrested and charged with the murders only a week after the murder after more eyewitnesses pointed him out as the lone shooter. This quadruple murder became a high-profile investigation for the police. At the press conference after they arrested 19-year-old Maurice for the murder, the police said that he's no stranger to CPD, nor is he unfamiliar with using an illegal handgun. Also, according to the police, Wet M Up had been arrested 29 times as a juvenile. This only proves what knowledge the police actually have about these members. They know what they are doing, but it is impossible to keep the investigations in step with the murders. That is why so few murders are actually solved, they simply do not have the time or resources for it. Maurice Harris, 
who faced four counts of first-degree murder, was denied bail, and was back in court on April 25, 2017. However, as you all know, Wet M Up was released in late 2020 for lack of evidence, and is currently a free man, which could mean he actually was innocent. However, three witnesses in the restaurant identified him as the sole shooter. I will go deeper into this in the history of No Limit Wet M Up. Shooter shells have now allegedly caught five bodies. Simo, Pistol P, Richie Rich, Yogi and Big Wet. So these are four bodies only on no limit, and one at ABK in revenge for his brother. Just as I have said in previous videos, including the video about 051 Melly, it is very unusual for a member to have three to four bodies on one set. There are a handful of members who have it but it is very unusual. The member who had the most on Black Mob was Mad Max, who was No Limit's main shooter and killer with two to three bodies on Black Mob. Shooter Shells was the biggest threat to No Limit, and Mad Max was the biggest threat to Black Mob, and both of their lives would be taken a year apart. Shooter Shells himself has also hinted about his body count. In the song Real Ones, which he released on May 22, 2017, Shooter Shells raps, I'm talking my count alone, I got a whole nick. For those who do not know, nick is an abbreviation of the word nickel. A nickel is a 5 cent coin. Shooter Shells himself claims that he has 5 bodies. Nigga bro bro cause they don't know shit. I'm talking my count alone, I got a whole a nick. Whole nick. Yeah, On April 6th, 2017, Shooter Shells released his by far most famous song and most acclaimed, much due to the fact that he was murdered three months later. Of course I'm talking about the song Death of 150. However, the song not only received attention after his death, it also received it before the murder. This was because Death of 150 is incredibly scornful and disrespectful to his enemies, no limit and ABK. He starts the song with a pretty clear mockery of rapper G Herbo when he says, I see your rapping ass do not want to shoot, to get to you I see I had to step in the booth. He also mocked ABK Yogi when he said, two shots to the face then give them two more to the head. The whole song was incredibly disrespectful, but the ending was on another level. He concluded by mentioning a number of dead members from No Limit, among others, Faizo, Kobe, Pistol P, Simo and Capo. However, as we've seen many times before in Chicago, a rapper releases a diss song, and is then killed or shot a few days, weeks or months later. We saw it with FBG Duck, Wooski, Lil Mark and now Shooter Shells. And now people will say, but he was not killed because of the song, which is completely correct, because he did an incredible amount of dirt in the street. But it cannot be a coincidence that many of these rappers die after releasing a disrespectful song, no matter how much dirt they have done on the street. Many gangs want to make an example of rappers who release diss songs, they want to show that you cannot get away with mocking them and because you know that there will be a lot of attention, you want to do it even more. After Shooter Shells allegedly caught his fifth body, No Limit were really desperate to get him. What is remarkable, however, is that Shooter Shells was also mentioned in Simo's police report as a suspect in the murder of Kobe from No Limit from the bloody summer between Black Mob and No Limit 2013. He was mentioned as one of two suspects in the murder, the other name was crossed out, my guess, KTS Vaughn. What was also mentioned in the police report was that Shooter Shells dumped a whole clip in Simo, 16 shots all over the body, it was a really dirty kill, just like with ABK Yogi, and a lot of his other alleged murders, he did them dirty. Therefore, no limit was determined, that if they succeeded in catching him, they would do him extra dirty. Just two months after the murder of Big Wet, 
No Limits succeeded and managed to get rid of its biggest threat, and Mad Max would catch his 11th and final body. However, my belief is that Mad Max had more than 11. He has, among other, also been linked to the murder of T-Bone from Black Mob, and Papa from Outlaw City. However, it is a very loose rumor as Gene Mineski, Duwap and Capo are the only ones linked to T-Bone before, and there is not much information on Papa. Either way, Mad Max was No Limit's biggest hitter of all time, he was really out there carrying No Limit on his shoulders, feared all over the east side and south side. After Max passed away, KT Estre even said that he missed Max, because he was the one causing all the noise out there. Now we come to the part where we talk about the murder of Shooter Shells, and Mad Max's 11th body. On July 10th, 2017, Shooter Shells' life would tragically come to an end when he was murdered in broad daylight. A hit that would go down as one of the absolute dirtiest kills in Chicago in a long time. Shooter Shells was about to get into his car in the Auburn Gresham community, when three men exited a white Nissan Altima and opened fire on that July morning. The three men ran up to shoot a shells and shot him multiple times in both his body and head, as he fell to the ground, it is alleged that the shooters stood over his body and took turns shooting him in the head. Shooter shells was shot approximately between 15 and 18 times in the head. About half of the head was shot off when the shooters left the scene. There are pictures out on the internet when he is lying on the ground, however, the picture is absolutely nothing I will show here and nothing I recommend you to look at. The three men then jumped into the car and sped off from the scene. Police recovered 43 shell casings near his body. This was indeed a heinous and grotesque murder that has unfortunately been seen far too many times in Chicago. Of course, I do not mean that any murder is less heinous than the other, it is still a life that is lost, but this murder was truly evil and awful. Just as with the murder of KTS Vaughn, there are different theories about who and what gang was actually behind the murder. In my video about the story of Shooter Shells, that was released six months ago, I mentioned Mad Max as one of the shooters who took the turn shooting Shooter Shells in the head, this rumor has now proven to be true. In the police report on the murder of Simo that I mentioned earlier, Christopher Jackson, also known as Mad Max, or C Money, from NLMB was mentioned as one of the shooters. It has always been quite obvious to me that No Limit was involved in the murder, and that Mad Max was one of the shooters. I'll tell you why. Two months before the murder, the FBI had joined forces with Chicago police to investigate the year-long, back-and-forth violence between Black Mob and No Limit. Both G Herbo and Lil Bibby have also mocked shooter shells and several songs. For example, in the song Four Minutes of Hell, Part 5, G Herbo rapped, can't think back on his decisions now, he ain't got no head, and in the song Crack Baby, Lil Bibby rapped, the last man dissed the gang, his brains was all sloppy. Some also speculate that the FBI has been involved because No Limit has famous rappers with a lot of money like G Herbo and Lil Bibby, 
who may have been involved in the murder in the case that they may have either put money on shooter shells' head, or supplied the shooters with weapons. It is very common for music industry money to be used to arm gangs around Chicago. G. Herbo has also mentioned Mad Max in several recent songs, and even named one of his songs on his latest album, Stand the Rain, Mad Max. In the song, G. Herbo rapped, I was filled with anger, homie got banged for saying my name, let his 30 flame, ain't changed, stood up for his gang, then his mans blew out his brain, this a dirty game. In the song writing with it, he rapped, Max was on them hits, so he could not have any feelings, all them people under his belt, and ain't got no civilians. But y'all stop commenting shit on my page, get the fuck off my page if y'all finna comment all this lame ass shit, I already know everything that's going on, leave me the fuck alone, I don't know nothing about nothing, y'all ask the police on veto, get the fuck off my page with that gay ass shit, I don't know nothing about nothing about nothing about nothing, get the fuck off my page before I don't get on live and block all y'all at. Principal. Get the fuck on, leave me the fuck alone, no folks. You know. I don't know nothing about nobody, bro, everybody broke as hell, bro. If your ass ain't rich or no limit, I don't give a fuck about you, folks. Leave me the fuck alone, no folks. Suck dick, I don't give a fuck about none of that shit. Please get the fuck off my page. Y'all ass goofy as hell. Bitch, I don't fucking care, bitch. You think I'm a bitch? I got an Instagram just like y'all, bitch. I know what the fuck going on. Get the fuck on, right around. Lasky folk, get the fuck off my page. Get the suck dick on, you know, get the fuck on. In the four years since the FBI took over the investigation, no charges have been brought in connection with shooter shell slaying. However, just one week after the murder, Mad Max was arrested by the police after they found a gun with a defaced serial number. I think there is a very high probability that the police deliberately sought out Mad Max to arrest him to question him about the murder, and maybe get him off the street. But C-Money was out on Essex the next day. The FBI investigation remains ongoing, which most likely indicates that at least one of the killers or the driver is alive. An autopsy report laid out the grim details. Shooter Shells was shot in the head, chest, right arm, right thigh, right foot, right calf and buttocks. He also suffered graze wounds to his left forearm and right wrist. Due to the fact that we now know for sure that No Limit Mad Max was one of the shooters in the murder, there is much to suggest that this was strictly a No Limit hit. However, it would not surprise me if ABK were actually involved, as No Limit often slid and hung out with members from ABK. Mad Max, for example, was very close to both Lil Rob and Yogi from ABK. The names that have previously been rumored from ABK that may have been present at the murder are Juju. T. Glizzy and Diddy Wop. My conclusion is that either only No Limit members were present at the murder, or that it was a constellation with No Limit and ABK. What supports the theory that ABK was present, is that Black Mob, especially Shoddy Hit and SGH went completely rampage on ABK after the murder of Shooter Shells. Diddy Wop was shot and killed the next year in February 2018. Diddy Wop was sitting in Uber at a red light on 75th Street and Stony Island Avenue at about 2.10 a.m. when a tan-colored vehicle pulled up, and someone inside opened fire. This someone, was allegedly shot he hit an SGH. Diddy Wop was shot multiple times in the face and neck. It is also rumored that shot he hit was involved in the murder of Jock from ABK the same year.
He off too much drink, bro. The drink is killed, motherfucking. <laughs> he talking about, he talking about poor kids. I gotta throw up. Look at However, Black Mob not only went on a rampage against ABK, but also against No Limit. 13 days after the murder of Shooter Shells, G Slim from NLMB was killed. It's alleged that Hal Ralph from Lakeside, with the help of Black Mob caught G Slim about 5.15 a.m. in the 1500 block of East 82nd Street along with two other men. Both were shot. G Slim, whose real name was Levondel Noble, 40, suffered gunshot wounds to the neck and right hand, and a 23-year-old man was shot in the face. G Slim was later pronounced dead at the hospital. Fortunately, the 23-year-old survived. As most of you already know, G Slim was the uncle of Melly and Wu from 051 Young Money, who both mourned his death. G Slim was one of the leaders and founders of No Limit who was loved by a lot of people in Chicago, he had connections all over the city. I also do not think it is a coincidence that the leader from Lakeside, Hell Rell, was one of those who allegedly took out the leader from No Limit, G Slim. Lakeside and Black Mob did not stop here. This is what you have to understand. Black Mob and KTS have just lost their most outstanding members, KTS Vaughn and Shooter Shells, and the same man was behind both murders, Mad Max. This is like when a block lost E-Roy in 2017 and King Bun in 2020. Both Lakeside and Black Mob continued to drop bodies in 2018, both on No Limit and ABK. Just like I mentioned earlier, Boomain from Lakeside dropped Dolph from No Limit in March 2018, and Black Mob continued to drop body after body on ABK, they were literally torching them. However, they still had not gotten rid of their main target and biggest threat, No Limit Mad Max. Now they were desperate, they had to get rid of him at all costs because just like G Herbo said, Mad Max did not know how to stop, he would not have stopped if he was alive. And why would he? He was never caught, he probably thought he was invincible after getting away with a dozen murders, just like with many other killers in Chicago who got away with the killing. A little more than a year after Mad Max got rid of shooter shells, his own life would sadly come to an end. It was really bound to happen, you really cannot do too much in Chicago without eventually losing your own life. In the end, you simply get too many enemies, and in the end they will do anything to get rid of you, that's just how it works, and always worked. On the 3rd of August 2018, Lakeside and Black Mob finally got their revenge on No Limit. This would be a highly publicized murder among the gangs in Chicago, due to the fact that one of those who actually put in most work in the city, allegedly told on his killer on his deathbed. About 3 p.m. on August 3rd, Christopher Jackson, also known as C Money or Mad Max, was moving into his mother's apartment building in the 7600 block of South Kingston Avenue, when he suddenly spotted Hell Rail from Lakeside outside of the apartment. As soon as Max noticed Hell Rail, he ran towards the building in an attempt to escape, but unfortunately he was chased down by the offender and was struck twice by bullets, once in his stomach and once in the arm. Mad Max was found slumped in the courtyard of the apartment complex in the South Shore and was rushed to the hospital. The first predictions actually showed that Mad Max would survive his injuries, but sadly, after the doctors managed to keep him alive for a month, Mad Max died exactly one month, on the day after being shot. Christopher Jackson was sadly pronounced dead on September 3, 2018. Now we come to the speculation that Mad Max snitched on his deathbed, and whether it is true or not, I would say yes and no, 
and I understand why no limit still honors him despite these speculations. Just a week before Christopher passed away in the hospital, he was questioned by authorities on his deathbed about the murder. Once on his deathbed, probably drugged out with morphine and other drugs, probably incited by the police to give a statement which he eventually did. In intensive care, Mad Max gave a videotaped statement to the police, naming Hellrail, whose real name is Terrell Webb, as his attacker. However, it was not because of his statement that he was arrested, a statement by a drugged individual with felonies on his deathbed would never hold in court, which it did not do later either. In fact, Hellrail was arrested just days after the murder, because of a witness who stepped forward who recognized Hellrail on the scene. In addition to witnesses, when Terrell was arrested, they recovered a handgun on him. Shell casings recovered at the scene were tested in the police department's gun lab, and matched the gun found on Terrell. Authorities also indicated they had surveillance video of Terrell, running near the crime scene around the time of the shooting. However, prosecutors declined to file any charges, and Hellrell was released. It's not clear why he was not held on gun charges. However, 11 days after the murder, an arrest warrant, charging Terrell with attempted first-degree murder was issued. Terrell was tracked down in Iowa on August 28, 2018 and arrested by the police. Just days later, his charges were upgraded to first-degree murder after Mad Max had passed away at the hospital. Hellrell was held without bail. Nearly two months, but Chicago police have filed their first murder charge stemming from the deadliest week in Chicago has seen this year. 27-year-old Terrell Webb is accused of shooting and killing a rival gang member. He was charged after a deathbed statement from the victim. It was one of more than a dozen murders the first weekend in August. Hellrell was actually recently released due to lack of evidence after fighting 45 to life for the murder of Mad Max. This makes me actually think he may have been innocent. He was present, it's pretty safe to say, as there is video on it, but what I've heard and now seems to agree with this, is that a member of Black Mob was actually the who shot and killed Mad Max. This member has long been rumored to be Meech from Black Mob. An interesting detail is also that Halrell is a cousin of Deo from Lakeside slash Black Mob, who Mad Max was rumored to have killed in 2009, which I told you about in the first part. After Hellrell was released from jail this year, about eight months ago, he immediately stepped out on social media with anger towards Mad Max because of his statement. He said things like, I do not care how many bodies you got, if you snitch, everything, I mean everything you did in the streets, do not mean shit. He also said that it is the people who are killing everybody, is the main people who are snitching. He also stated that he was innocent which actually could be true since he was released despite all the evidence available to him. If he was really innocent, I really understand his anger. But then why would Mad Max mention him in his statement? Could it have been that the police wanted him to mention Hellrail, or that Max barely knew what he was talking about? You really have to remember that Max was lying on his deathbed, drugged out, only a few days left to live on this earth. You can't possibly know what was going through his brain. At the same time, I understand the anger from the other side towards Max, because he actually made a statement. I understand both sides. No Limit warned Mad Max after his death, especially his brothers Mineski and Mali. Another who mourned was No Limit G. Herbo, who was one of Mad Max's best friends since childhood. There are videos and photos of G. Herbo from the funeral, where you could see tears running down his cheeks. It was really a sad sight, and I cannot imagine the pain his brothers, family, G. Herbo and the rest of his friends felt.
those of you who follow the war between No Limit and Lakeside, Black Mob and Pocket Town, know that it has been really hot this year. After the murder of Mad Max, it was pretty quiet out on the streets, KTS Trey even said it himself, most of it has been about No Limit shorties who have beefed with shorties from death row, which was very hot in 2019, and which resulted in several murders. I will make a video about that war in the future. But in early 2021, the war between mainly Lakeside, Pocket Town and No Limit started again. After one of No Limit's main and most respected members, No Limit Lil Greg was shot and killed. Lil Greg, whose real name was Gregory Jackson, was in the Studio 19 Barbershop, at 1931 South State Street, shortly after noon on January 28th, when someone walked in and shot him in the face. Lil Greg, a 24-year-old from the South Shore, was pronounced dead at Stroger Hospital a short time later. Lil Greg's death occurred just hours after he appeared before a Cook County judge for a marijuana possession charge. His attorney, Herschel, successfully pleaded the charge down to a misdemeanor, and Jackson walked free after he was sentenced to six days of time served. One person was actually arrested in connection to the murder, but was only charged with a gun. That person was Christopher Mosley, a member of Pocket Town. No Limit was immediately looking for blood after the murder of Lil Greg, and only three months later, they would get their revenge on Pocket Town. On Friday, March 26, 2021, several Pocket Town members were at a party in the 2500 block West 79th Street. Children, mothers and fathers were also present at the party. According to what I have heard, No Limit pulled up to the party with heavy weapons, and started shooting everyone. The incident was mentioned as a mass shooting in the newspaper. Eight people in total were shot at the party. Three of those shot were three of Pocket Town's most outstanding members, Spook, Lord and Denny G, all with bodies under their belt. Both Spook and Lord were shot in the head, Spook later died at the hospital. Both Lord and Denny G, who was shot, fortunately survived the shooting. I will soon be making a video about Denny G, Spook and KTS Trey. In a news clip about the mass shooting, surveillance videos were shown where Pocket Town members returned fire towards the offenders, but there is nothing I can show here. The names from No Limit that I have heard of been involved in this are shorties and very unknown members, and these are just rumors, but the names I have heard are Pharaoh, who Cairo recently gave the award Savage of the Year, and who I also believed was one of the killers of KTS Trey. And this is not the Pharaoh as in Fazo's brother. I've also heard EBK Mula and No Limit Lil Hot. Keep in mind, this is only rumors.
After the assassination of Spook, who was one of the leaders of Pocket Town, KTS and Pocket Town, sliding on no limit began immediately. One person was shot on NLMB territory immediately after, and no limit continued to get shot up several days after the murder. To me, it was pretty clear that it was no limit that was behind the murder and the shooting, because several no limit members posted Lil Greg on social media. On July 10th, it was time for another murder, again no limit would strike again. But this time on KTS. KTS Trey, whose real name was Londra Sylvester, who was the brother of KTS Vaughn, was standing with a 60-year-old woman in the 2700 block of Southern California Avenue just after being released from jail, when a car pulled up around 8.50 p.m. Saturday, five men who waited for him, and ambushed him, ran up to him and started literally spraying bullets toward him. According to news sites, KTS Trey was shot 64 times, with bullets hitting him in the face and all over his body. A 60-year-old woman, who was standing with the rapper when he was shot, was in good condition after a bullet hit her in the knee. Police also confirmed that a 35-year-old woman who was grazed by a bullet while passing in the area, also was in good condition in hospital. KTS Trey had seen his fiance put up $5,000 to secure his release, after he was charged with violating a bond from a previous case in April 2020. He was arrested at the time for being in possession of a weapon and resisting police. I will make a video where I go into the murder in more detail. Right now the war is really hot between No Limit, Lakeside and Pocket Town. Just a week ago Lil Don from KTS was shot for the second time this year. Fortunately he survived. Members from both sides are mocking each other back and forth on social media all the time. This was the story of No Limit Mad Max. This is a story I myself thought was very interesting, as no one talks about it. Everyone already knows the story of Melly, King Von, KTS Trey and so on, but no one has talked about the one who might put in most work of them all. A person who literally involved in a dozen murders, two of No Limit's main enemies, and then being killed himself and giving a statement on his deathbed. Rest in peace Mad Max and everyone else who lost their lives in the gang violence, I suffer with them families and friends who have suffered the grief of losing a family member or friend. Hope you enjoyed the 3 hours about Mad Max.